This is Dr. Simari from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm trying to share with you some ideas about how to deal with the hard nucleus. After creating two paracentesis, main incision with 2.2 mm, injection of uh, uh, preservative free lidocaine and uh, visco adaptive device, creating the capsule rexus with about 5 to 5 mm, 6.0 mm. We're always trying to avoid the small rexus within the hard nucleus cataract surgery because it will complicate the situation. So try to make it average rexus diameter or much bigger. Hydro dissection of the hard nucleus, it, here in this case it's presented as one big piece nucleus we don't see any signs for liquid cortex or epinucleus so slightly and carefully to avoid the zonal stress well this lady is about 91 year old uh, she has no other pathologists in, in the eye quite good corporation try here to to operate or deal with these cases with a combination of vertical and, and horizontal chop I prefer always to start with the vertical chop to divide the nucleus in at least four pieces well the first moment is to make the implement of the faculty tip within the nucleus maintain good stability of the nucleus and make the first vertical chop and use the philosophy of Dr. Vazavada with the lateral separation in situ. So putting the two instruments within the groove and separate them carefully. The first strategy is to remove the first small quadrant to win some space and that will help you to move this hard fragments within the capsular bag and this will reduce the zonal stress. As always recommended to remember that the phaco tip must be always central and the whole manipulation can be done with the help of chop or manipulator. So all the manip manipulation are done with the second hand the phaco tip is placed centrally to have the best possible anterior chamber stability and of course you will reduce the phaco energy damage to the other intracular structures so always keep it on the supra capsular level and dealing with the fragment one by one we see here the machine, the Infinity FACO machine has very efficient, efficient FACO dynamics and the hard pieces are disappearing very quickly. Now we are removing the, uh, the epinucleus which is uh, hard as well and it can be sometimes tricky to do that so take your time and carefully capture the edge of the epinucleus or the ruminant cortex and uh, always work centrally without cautic movements. So after removing this uh, hard nucleus uh, we have to take care about that always hard nucleus can leave uh, hard small invisible fragments that can move in different spaces especially below the main and, and uh, side incisions or below the iris we get some simosis and I like this technique to puncture the conjunctiva to release the subtenol or subconjunctival fluidics and this chemosis will disappear within a few seconds. The bimanual IA is very helpful in these cases. 
So now, as we see, the capsule of bag is empty because the hard nucleus was represented as one big piece cataract. As I told you here, that the hard fragments can be always founded. And they can be invisible below the main incision or the side incision. So it is always it is always recommended to explore the anterior chamber carefully before you finish your your surgery. You see here the hard fragments of epineucleus are smashed by manually and in some cases if it is harder or bigger pieces it's recommended to go back with a phaco tip to remove the, uh, the the fragments. The surgery here must be done carefully and with the respect to the intracular anatomy. Gentle movements to the capsule bag because we've tried to avoid always the iatrogenic zonal alus, especially in cases of very old people. And after that, I try always to review the, the paracentesis, the both the both ones. We, we we catch some small fragments always. So please be careful to collect all the fragments carefully and meticulously, because the less inflammation in the anterior chamber means the less risk for the postoperative macroedema. Now we prepare the anterior chamber with the viscoadaptive device for the implant implantation of the Acrisoft. And here are some tips from Dr. Osher is to, after injection in the bag, we place the IOL distally to create space for evacuation of viscoadaptive device from the capsular bag. So we put the IOL distally, we remove the viscoadaptive device with bimanual technique with respect to the possible floppy posterior capsule, and we remove the visco from the anterior surface of the eye well and now we get some feeling that the eye well is floating within the capsule bag and this is a good sign that all the visco is out and now I'm reviewing the space below the iris and sometimes we can catch some small remnant fragments so be careful about to remove all the fragments from the anterior chamber and you see here, uh, at uh, one clock we get another small fragment here. So we have to be carefully with to to explore the anterior segment carefully to remove all these fragments because they can cause all kind of damage to the endothelium, chronic inflammation, postoperative macroedema, and so on. So extra review and extra extra revision of the posterior chamber oh. and after that placing the IOL with overlapping technique now hydration the 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 paracentesis and the main incision and you see here that there is another small fragment it is always recommended to remove it as well and after that, finalizing the surgery with the antibiotics, as recommended according to the Swedish standard ophthalmic treatment. Thank you very much for your kind attention.